the backside of a an American dollar bill. If you look to your left, you'll see a pyramid. And the capstone on that pyramid is an eye emanating light. The eye on the top signifies the one, which is known as the monad in Greek and the Ein Sof in Kabbalah. You'll notice that it is emanating rays of light. Those are the emanations of the one which produce being. The remainder of the pyramid is produced by the emanations of those rays of lights in a hierarchy of being. Now the one is got several attributes. It is perfect unity, meaning it has no parts. It is not differentiated. It is eternal, meaning that it does not change or exist in temporal time. It is ultimate goodness. It is only good. And it is composed purely of light. And you will notice that this pyramid is made of layers. Those layers represent the emanations that pass from the top towards the bottom. Remember that emanation relates to descent down the hierarchy of being. The important thing to note right now is that as these emanations pass down towards the bottom, they become further and further differentiated into more and more parts. We see that the one is breaking apart and the light of the one is breaking apart and that will ultimately produce sparks. We also should note that the chain of being then passes from the world's soul to the uh, lesser gods below it, the angels and demons below the lesser gods, and then human beings, to animals, to plants, to rocks and minerals. And bear in mind that this is a constant descent getting further and further away from God as the emanations proceed down their chain. At the very bottom, at the foundation, we see what the Greeks referred to as matter. Remember the attributes of God. God is eternal, God is unity, God is good, God is light, God is undivided, he exists in eternal time. Matter is exactly the opposite. Now matter is what the Jews call tohu and bohu in the first paragraph of Genesis. And in the Greek conception, it is a pre-existing substratum which in and of itself is nothingness, what the Kabbalists would refer to as a non-entity. It is absolute darkness. It is the furthest distance from God that one can get, and it is non-being. And that is the realm of the Gentiles. So the Jews view themselves as the capstone of the pyramid, as the one, and they view Gentiles as matter, as non-being, pure darkness, pure evil, ever-changing, and they believe that they can use uh, kind of a black magic on Gentiles to completely convert them into this matter of nothingness and thereby make them cease to exist. Again, we have the one as a body of light like the sun emanating its rays of light. And as the emanations proceed downwards, they approach the darkness of matter and they start to separate further and further, creating more and more differentiation. And you can see that they break down into sparks and that those sparks become greater in number, less significant and more shrouded in evil darkness as we proceed toward the base of the hierarchy of being. Now the Jews view themselves as wanting to engage in epistrophe. They want the ascent up the ladder 
towards the one. And Kabbalists practice the old ancient belief of the mystics and in mysticism that there can be an ecstatic reunion with the one. That ecstatic reunion with the one means that the Jews utilize knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to elevate themselves up the ladder, the great chain of being, as it's called, the hierarchy of being. And the mystics said that that was an ecstatic um, transcendence that one experiences when they ascend the hierarchy of being through epistrophe. And that is the opposite of emanation. Instead of the light being projected downwards from the one, the Ein Sof, it is the light returning back to its origin, back to the one, so it forms a cycle. In the world to come, the Jews will have elevated the earth along the hierarchy of being to equal what is in heaven, the throne of God on the seventh heaven on the planet Saturn. So they are going to be making the earth like the planet Saturn. And the method that they will use to do that is to destroy matter and destroy the Gentiles. So what this is symbolizing is taking that many, which are the Jews, and restoring them to the unity of the one, which is the Ein Sof. And that is what the Kabbalistic symbolism on the back of the dollar signifies. And it's a good introduction to uh, Kabbalah. Uh, in Kabbalah, from its roots in Greek philosophy, is that as the emanations of light project their light onto the blank substratum, which is chaos, and void the matter referred to as tohu and bohu at the very bottom rung of the chain of being those forms which exist as ideal forms in the noose in the mind of god which is the first emanation those little seeds come down and give forms that we can perceive mind of to god. that chaotic matter now, in Kabbalah, those forms take the form of Jews having different souls from Gentiles. Jews have those little sparks, the Logoi Spermaticoi, within their souls. Their souls contain those sparks of divine light as the differentiated emanations of the Ein Sof. But in Gentiles, those sparks are not contained in their souls. They simply loosely hover over the Gentiles so that the form of the Gentile exists as a phantasm, as a non-being in that chaotic matter. And that is why the Zohar refers to Gentiles as tohu and bohu. It means that they are simply reflected shadows and forms that are caused by these sparks of the emanation, but do not contain these sparks. That means that if the Jews, through the process of tikkun olam, can raise those sparks, which hover over the Gentiles, they will free that light, and then epistrophe will occur. And the light will elevate up the chain of being, up the hierarchy of being, and escape from the Gentiles, who are shells of darkness and who are purely evil. When that happens, those sparks, which gave form and existence to Gentiles, will no longer be in the realm of chaos and void, tohu and bohu. Therefore, the Gentile whose spark is elevated, will cease to exist and re will resolve back into nothingness. Yosef Yitzhak Schneerson, who was the sixth Rebbe, utilized his Kabbalistic black magic to defeat Gentiles by resolving them back into non-entities. 
And if we read the precise quotes, we will see that what he is referring to is taking the divine sparks away from Gentiles so that their matter, their tohu and bohu, resolves back into nothingness because Gentiles are what he calls non-entities. So by raising the sparks, you are now depriving matter, chaos, of those sparks. So it is the end of Gentiles because the, um, the ideal forms will no longer be presented to matter. So the creation of the Gentiles will be destroyed. So what the Rebbe is calling for is for Gentiles to continue to fall until they are eradicated, while at the same time the earth and the Jews are raised up, ascend the ladder towards the source of the light and become rectified and redeemed in that process as Gentiles are destroyed in that process. Think of it this way. If you take a light and you shine it on this primordial matter, which is chaos, these ideal forms which exist in the mind of God take on somewhat corrupted and less ideal forms, but they become something in this darkness, and they turn non-being into being. But if you remove the light, that immediately again returns to darkness, and that's what the Jews want to do to Gentiles. They want to turn off the light that was turned on to this chaotic darkness and restore it back to chaotic darkness for Gentiles. Well, they themselves elevate their sparks back towards higher levels of this emanation. And they also want to lift the world up the level of being so that it matches the seventh heaven and the throne of God on the planet Saturn. So that is why Takun Olam is always talking about elevating the sparks and releasing the divine sparks from the darkness. In the Torah, in the book of Genesis, it states that in the Garden of Eden, Yahweh, uh, known as the Elohim, the gods, forbid Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge. And the gods did this because they were afraid that if Adam ate of knowledge, he would be able to use knowledge, deat, as a bridge across the great divide and therefore ascend up the chain of being and become one of the gods. So the gods were afraid that knowledge can enable human beings who are intermediary beings and lower beings to ascend and become higher beings, to become gods. And one of the attributes of gods is that they are eternal. So knowledge becomes the tree of life, and the Torah is the source of this knowledge, and the Torah is referred to by Kabbalists as the tree of life. And you would think that it would be called the tree of knowledge, but it's not, because knowledge creates divinity and causes one to ascend the hierarchy of being so that it thereby becomes the tree of life. So this is vitally important to understanding the Jewish agenda and the Kabbalistic agenda, because just as the gods tried to prevent mankind from uh, eating of knowledge and gaining deyat so it could cross the bridge over the great divide between the realm of the divine and the realm of the mundane, the Jews tried to prevent Gentiles from gaining knowledge. Because just as Adam was punished with death when he ate or when Eve was tempted and grabbed the fruit of the tree of knowledge, the Jews condemn Gentiles to death for gaining knowledge. In the Babylonian Talmud, folio 59a, which states that any Gentile who gets the knowledge of the Torah deserves death. So again, the Jews are constantly modeling themselves allegorically after what their gods do in the Torah. And the story of the Garden of Eden and forbidding the Gentiles from gaining knowledge drives the Gentiles down 
the Jacob's ladder towards matter, towards becoming nothingness without knowledge, because that knowledge also helps to create their form. So if they are deprived of knowledge, they will descend down into nothingness. If the Jews consume knowledge and safeguard knowledge, just as their gods did, then they will ascend Jacob's ladder and return to the first one emanating all of the light. This story is repeated in the story of the Tower of Babel. This is very important to understand because uh, we are being persecuted in the exact same way allegorically. Because what the gods did to prevent this unity of humanity, at the time all human beings spoke the same language, which means that they shared their knowledge and they were able to pass along knowledge to one another and to their children so that knowledge would not have to be regained in every generation. In other words, they were allowed to progress up the hierarchy of being, up the chain of being to become gods. And that scared the hell out of the gods. So what the gods did was they shattered the Tower of Babel, shattered all the knowledge and lowered human beings down the chain of being back into the realm of matter and material. And at the same time, they made every human being speak a different language so that there could be absolutely no unity among human beings. Remember, unity is an attribute of the one. So they differentiated human beings, stripped them of their knowledge, and stripped them of their ability to communicate with one another and share their knowledge and allow their knowledge to progress, especially from generation to generation. So the Tower of Babel is actually a, rep a repetition of the story of the Garden of Eden, uh, conveying the exact same lessons to the Jews. Now the Jews view themselves as gods of the earth, just as Yahweh and Shekinah are gods of the heavens. And they want to make the earth as above, so below, and they want to perfect the earth so that the earth rises up the chain of being to heaven. In order to do this, what they do is they atomize Gentiles. They pit Gentiles against one another, which is the same lesson as the Tower of Babel. Now, the Jews, I think, in Shabbat, in the Babylonian Talmud, Folio Shabbat, um, folio 88A or 88B, I think it is, state that as long as there is a single Jew alive who studies the Torah, the state of being of the universe will continue to exist. But if every Jew were to abandon the Torah, then all of the knowledge would be lost and the entire world would dissolve and resolve back into tohu and bohu and become nothingness. So that is why the Jews view it as vitally important that they become Jacob in the tents studying the Torah, while Esau is the animal, the darkness, the shells, the caliphot, out in the fields providing the means for sustenance for the Jews to engage in this Torah study. So all of these Greek ideas are utilized as a justification for their pre-existing hatred of Gentiles and their belittlement of Gentiles because they place Gentiles on the lowest rung of the ladder of being and they place themselves on the highest rung of the ladder of being as polar opposites. They are the light, they are goodness, they are eternal, they will inherit the world to come. Gentiles are exactly the opposite. Gentiles are pure evil, Gentiles are pure darkness, Gentiles are temporal as opposed to eternal and will cease to exist. And the world to come can only be created by removing the darkness from the present world 
and elevating the state of being of the present world to the heavenly world. And that entails killing off the Gentiles. And another one of the things that I discuss in my new book is the fact that they are also doing this with transhumanism. And this is another one of the subjects that uh, Farah and DeHart covered in their book, Transhumanism, but I have a different take on it. And that is they are feeding us corrupted foods to drive us down the hierarchy of being to become mineral. And they are doing this first by veganism to keep us from eating meat. Recall that the next uh, level down in the hierarchy of being from human beings is animals. So they want to keep us from eating animals. And you are what you eat. So they are practicing alchemy and spiritual alchemy against Gentiles and driving them down. So that when the Gentile diet is deprived of meat, Gentiles descend further down the hierarchy of being towards absolute darkness. They next have corrupted plants with GMOs and fertilizers, which are composed of minerals. So they are now turning plant matter into mineral matter, which drives us further down the chain of being and which corrupts our food source and is driving human beings down the uh, hierarchy of being into minerals. And they are also making meat out of plants, which has been made out of these minerals and which has been genetically modified, which has changed its mineral structure. So all of these attacks on the Gentiles are meant to lower the status of our being down the hierarchy of being into becoming the purity of the caliphate, which is darkness, and at the same time removing any trace of the light that shines from the sparks that hover above us, from us, so that we become uh, nothingness. And that is what the Rebbe is referring to when he says the Gentiles are non-entities. And what he's really saying is that the forms of Gentiles are only phantasms, are only ghosts, which appear to the Jews but are not real being. And they only appear to the Jews because there are lingering sparks of um, the emanations that are shining on these shells of material, of matter, of darkness. And that if the Jews can elevate those sparks of light through the process of tikkun olam, they can remove that light that is shining on the matter and thereby get rid of these ghosts, these evil spirits that are Gentiles. And Gentiles will just disappear. But in terms of practical Kabbalah, which is like practical magic, they are utilizing their knowledge, their science to do all these things. And the attack is taking the form of the attack of corrupting the diet and the genetics of human beings to make human beings into minerals, which is the lowest level of the chain of being. And they also do this with transhumanism by uh, taking away natural childbirth and creating hybrid cyborg organisms. And I get into this in, in my new book as well. They are going to combine um, organic matter with silicon matter and with computer chips and things into a new form of being which has no independent will, which has no soul, which has no divine spark of the soul. And remember that the world soul is the third emanation in the divine realm, and it creates the finite souls. So what they are again doing is stripping Gentiles of the emanations of light and driving them down the chain of being into becoming programmable minerals. So what they are doing is forcing uh, genetic, the DNA of Gentiles to be combined with machines into cyborgs, which they will say are now superior, but which will be um, programmable 
and integrated into uh, the matrix. I forget what they call it. It's a similar term in physics, the singularity, which they call the singularity. And through the singularity, they will be able to program all of these cyborg robots. And that is the ultimate form that the darkness of the Gentile Esau will become. It will become these robotic slaves of the Jews, and they will have sex slaves, they will have work slaves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They will even have slaves who um, utilize their heightened intelligence through integrated computer systems within their being, which will have no soul and have no independent will to uh, figure out better ways of destroying the Gentiles and performing tikkun olam. It will become an ever escalating, like the birth pangs, an ever escalating series of catastrophes for Gentiles, which in, <clears throat> excuse me, which in turn elevates the Jews.